Hello, everyone. We are here with Candy Washington. And Candy is a diverse female writer, content creator, and Georgetown alum. Her professional and personal purpose is to add value to the lives of others through storytelling. And she creates inspiring content across film, TV, digital, and publishing platforms that are rooted in wellness and self care. So beautiful. Hi, Candy. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for having me. Just want to show you some gratitude for doing this. So thank you. Oh, thank you. And I'm so glad we were able to connect and it just, you know, felt so right to have you join us. So I can't wait to talk about uh, what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about self-love. So first I want to ask you what you define self-love as and why it's so important. Yeah. So for me, I define self-love as the compassionate and graceful relationship that you have with yourself. So that's how do you speak to yourself? How do you, you know, think of yourself? What healthy boundaries do you create in your life? It's really just having a loving and compassionate relationship to yourself where you really create your own well-being as your first and best priority. It's really prioritizing yourself and your own well-being versus self-care because I do a lot of self-care stuff. So a lot, and I think a lot of times people confuse self-care and self-love. So self-care is actually the tools and the practices and the beliefs that we do in order to implement a loving relationship that we have with ourselves. So it's, mm. I love myself, therefore I take care of myself. So self-love is the compassionate relationship that you have with yourself. And self-care is the tools and the practices rituals, beliefs, boundaries that you have in place to, you know, show that loving relationship to yourself to implement that relationship. Oh, so beautifully put. And I'm so glad you kind of differentiated between the two because I think we get them mixed up quite often. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Self-care yeah. is a tool that we use to show ourselves love. Yes. And it's great, but self-love is like the most important thing, right? Um, okay. What are the five essential signs that someone's level of self-love might not be as high as it should be? Oh, yes. So this is a big one on creating the awareness that you're not honoring and loving the unique space that you take up in this world enough. And I think the first one is you are hypercritical of yourself. This shows up as perfectionism. This shows up as, you know, negative self-talk. This shows up as holding yourself to a very hard, sometimes unattainable standard. You feel you have to be superhuman while you give grace and love to everybody else. You are super, super hard on yourself. So that's one sign. Um, the second sign is that you get in and you stay in unhealthy relationships. So I define unhealthy relationships just as those toxic relationships where you are giving, giving, giving more than you are receiving when you feel depleted rather than replenished when you're with someone. This can either be physical, emotional, mental, spiritual abuse in these relationships and not just romantic. These could be family relationships. Sometimes siblings have toxic relationships. Definitely parent-child can be toxic. This can show up in your romantic relationships, um, whatever that may be, you know, whether it's with your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. And it can also show up in your friendships. You know, we talk a lot about frenemies, but that's a really true sign that you're not honoring yourself enough. If you find yourself in these familial, coworker even, um, romantic and, and just platonic friendships where you're constantly the one who is giving and the other person is taking advantage of that, or you don't feel that it's a mutually beneficial relationship, that's a big sign because essentially what you're saying is that my needs and wants don't matter as much as this other person's needs or wants matter. And that's simply not true. Your needs and wants are your first and best priority and they do matter and how you feel is important and you deserve to have people show up for you at the same level you show up for them across all of your relationships. The third sign is that you don't have clear boundaries and you people please. I have to put my hand up. I am a recovering mm -hmm. people pleaser. Like nobody's mm -hmm. 
business. So this shows up with really having a hard time saying no. I used to get a pit in my stomach. If I had to say no to anyone, I would get like frantic. I was like, I don't want them not to like me. They're going to think I'm a bad person. They're going to be like, well, who does she think she is? Like, it's good. They're, they're going to leave me like all of this, like crazy, unhealthy chatter I had going on in my head. Because when you don't have healthy boundaries and you people, please, that's really rooted in saying, I get my worth outside of myself. So I have to do, show, perform, prove, like give, give, give in order to be deserving of love, affection, validation, acceptance, rather than intrinsic value, which is I am, therefore I am enough. Like I am like, I am lovable as is I'm worthy and deserving as is I don't have to give or do or perform. I get my value from myself. It's intrinsic. I am here, therefore I am worthy. So as long as you are getting it from other people, of course, you're going to be scared to say no. Of course, you're not going to have clear boundaries. Of course, you're not going to enforce, you know, what your word is, whether it's a yes or a no, because you're so fearful that if you actually do say, no, I can't do that for you, then somehow you're not going to be worthy of that person's love, affection, or validation. And that's just simply not true. So if you have trouble with boundaries, if you people please, you can't say no, that's a big sign that you really want to work on your own level of self-love. The fourth sign is that you don't take care of yourself in a holistic way. So I think a lot of people might miss this part because you don't think of it. You're like, oh, I'm just been in my pajamas for five days, whatever. You know, I'll, I'll get a manicure later on. Um, you know, 2020 I'll, I'll in a nutshell. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'll go to the gym next week. You know, oh, I'll, I'll do that juice cleanse, you know, on the new year or whatever it is. If you don't take care of yourself holistically, that's a sign that there's some part of you that might think you're not deserving of it or you're not worthy of it, or you don't take the time to take care of yourself. You're putting everybody else ahead of you. You know, think of it this way. If you are like, I'm not a parent, but say you were a parent and your child said to you, hey, I need one hour of your time a week just for you. I'm pretty sure every parent would, be, would find that one hour that week. So you want to treat yourself as if that's your own inner child saying to you, I need one hour a week of your time. You know, find that one hour, whether it's that one hour to do yoga, whether it's that one hour to go to therapy, whether it's that one hour to connect with a spiritual leader, whether it's one hour to get cocktails with the girls, you know, whether it's one hour to go take a walk or whatever it is, it could be one hour, it could be five, it could be 10 minutes, you know, whatever makes sense for you. If you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not eating correctly, if you're not hydrating, if you're not doing things that just bring you joy, if you don't have you know, a connection with a community or support system, you know, all of the buckets of your life, mind, body, and spirit, holistically taking care of yourself. That's a sign that you probably are a, you know, depleted somewhere, you know, you're probably not feeling good. You're probably feeling lethargic. You're probably feeling depressed. You might be feeling a little sluggish, you know, all of those things. I'm not saying you have to, you know, do a spa day every day and just forget about all of your responsibilities. <laughs> Absolutely not. But you also have to be cognizant of the fact that you deserve to take time for yourself and you deserve to take time to fill your cup back up. You know, it's not about the face mask. It's about the intentionality behind it. It's about I'm taking this time to just take care of myself. You know, your face mask could look like journaling. Your face mask could look like meditating. Your face mask could look like, you know, calling somebody and say, hey, I'm having a hard time. Can I just talk to you? So it's just really about taking care of yourself holistically, knowing that all of those things really make up your overall well-being as a person. It's not just the mindfulness. It's not just exercising. It's not just, you know, eating right. It's all of those buckets make up a whole person. And I, and for me, the fifth thing is that, and, another, and this is another one I think people might uh, miss out on, is that you feel disconnected from your intuition and you lack confidence and self-trust. This is a massive one. If you don't trust yourself. So this could look like, you know, I don't like, say you have a decision to make big or small and you're just like, I don't, I don't have any guidance. I don't, I don't know what to do. So you're Googling the answer. You're asking all of your friends, but you haven't stopped to go inward 
and get your own inner wisdom and your own inner guidance or your, your own intuition. Of course, it's great to have support. Of course, it's great to talk to people. But, the end of the, but at the end of the day, you are the ultimate authority on you. And no matter what, you always know what is the best right next step for yourself. It's just being sure to access and tap back into your own intuition and your own inner guidance system. That's where the meditation comes in. That's where prayer comes in. That's where journaling comes in. That's when you really silence all the chatter, all the outside noise, and you reconnect to self. So for me, and again, when I say prayer or anything religious, it's not necessarily about any particular religion. It's just, again, back to relationship. What is your relationship to any higher power or source, God, you know, a universe, whatever language you want to use that is comfortable for you is fine. It's just a greater source that's connected to all of us. That's all I mean by that. So for me, when I talk about meditation, that is when, you know, I really receive that guidance from the higher source that is in me, my own inner source. You know, you meditate, you might meditate to like a mantra or an affirmation or something. And it's just, you're you're really just receiving that guidance. So then when I go out into the world and I'm doing things, I can kind of get settled and be like, oh, I I can hear that inner guidance. I can hear that little whisper. You know, I I know that I can do it. And then because I've worked on self-esteem, self-worth and self-love, I then have the confidence to say, Everyone is telling me to go right, but my inner voice, my intuition is telling me to to go left. I am going to then trust myself enough to say I'm going left regardless of what anybody else has to say about it. And that is really when you get to that level of self-awareness and and that intuition that you have, and then you're able to actually say, I am confident enough to trust myself above all else. And that's really the place you want to get to. So if you feel disconnected from your inner guide, if you lack the confidence to follow yourself, if you don't trust yourself more than you trust other people's opinions, voices, perceptions, judgments, then that's a sign that you might really want to start working on self-love, self-esteem, and and self-confidence. And I forgot to add in a little bit about prayer. Again, it's just not about religion, just that relationship. So to me, the difference between meditation and prayer is meditation is when I really receive that guidance. That's to me, that's when God source is talking to me. Prayer is when I am talking to God or source. So that's when I am saying to them, this is what I'm going through. I surrender it. This is, I'm giving it over to you or whatever it is. This is what I need guidance on. So it's really just about having that relationship and that communication to that higher power, that higher source that is of you, but greater than you. And so that to me is really what that the two difference is like, that's what the difference is between meditation and prayer for me. And then journaling is the way that I get it out. So I can write down, oh, I got, you know, this inspired action today, or I'm going to script something I really want to, you know, you know, manifest in my life, or these are just the thoughts I have, or the feelings I have, because when you're able to get it out of you, you're able to get um, some detachment from it and also some perspective on it. Sometimes when it's in your mind going nuts, it's hard to, to really get discernment, mm-hmm. but when you get it out, you're, you're able to look at it. So those are the five ways for me. So, so well put. And yeah, with journaling, it's like just this huge release. And especially when you cultivate a strong journaling practice, it's like, you'll be going through something. You're like, I need to get this out and like, write it down. And then you feel so much relief just from getting it out of your body and your mind and on paper. Um, so I love that you brought that up. I, I love all of those because I think everyone can relate to having times in their life where they've been at a certain place, um, struggling with one of those areas. But I think typically we come back to one or two areas that are just something that we have to continuously work on in our lives. And, um, and that's fine. That's like part of this human experience, but as you kind of, as you said, it's so important that we fill up our cup. Um, and that when we do that, we can then bring our gifts to the world. And that's like what the world really needs. And that's part of why we're here. Um, so I just love how you said all of that. So beautiful. Um, okay. So what other than prayer and journaling and meditation, do you have any other tools that you have for people to combat 
like maybe the specific ones, like I feel like boundaries are huge for so many people. Sorry, my yeah. dog's back there, like <laughs> walking around. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think having boundaries, not just with other people at all, but also with yourself, like make little promises to yourself a day. Like today I'm going to make sure that I drink three liters of water. I'm going to you know, go for a walk. I'm going to send one big scary email that I've been meaning to send, you know, for my business or whatever it is. So I think make little promises to yourself that, that you keep to yourself because you're also showing yourself that your judgment and your discernment and, and your inner guidance is correct, that you know, it's right for you. And then you also can, you also then have the confidence to, to follow through for yourself. So when you're taking care of yourself in that way, it's easier to say to somebody else, Hey, that doesn't feel right to me. Like you you can't do that. Or like, this doesn't really resonate with where I'm going in my life. Like we can't do that as well. So boundaries really are just communicating and implementing what your limitations are with other people. So you're showing them a, how they can treat you, how they can behave around you and what they can expect from you. So this could look like, say you work a nine to five job, or if you're even an entrepreneur, this could be for any, any workplace, you can set your hours. You can say, I'm in the office from nine to five. Prior to that, my phone is off. After that, my phone is off. Of course, if there is an emergency, I will be, you know, accessible for emergencies, but don't expect me to always be on, you know, we kind of have this culture where we've glorified the hustle. We've We've glorified being busy And we've glorified like always being on and accessible and digital. And it's me, I'm just like, that's not even, that sounds horrible. I don't want to hustle in my life. I want to be in the flow of my life. And the way you get in your flow is, you know, this is the time I'm on for business. This is the time I'm off for me. You know, and say like, again, say you're uh, a parent and, or like you're married and you have like your spouse and you feel that you are just being pulled in so many different directions, create boundaries within your family. You know, you say, Hey guys, mommy time is Sundays from two to four. Don't expect mommy to be around. Don't expect mommy to be on. You're like, hubby's going to take you, wifey's going to take you, grandma, babysitter, whatever you're going to be taken care of, but that's mommy's time. And then mommy's going to go do whatever mommy needs to do during that time. So they know that during that time, they can expect you to be gone. (laughs) They can't be accessible to you. (laughs) You are allowed to, because again, I think it's glorified that you are super mom, super spouse, super girlfriend, super sister, super all these things that you don't get to just be human and you don't just get to be you. So it's okay to say, boss, I'm on here to here. You know, if you need me for an emergency, I'm on, you know, family, I'm available this time, but I'm not available this time. I'm going to my salsa class. I'm going to my wine and pottery class. You know, I'm going to go take a painting class and I'm just going to go read under a tree whatever it is, create those boundaries of these are the times I'm on for you. And these are the times I'm off for me and really enforce them and also implement them. I think another key thing to do is to self validate your own emotions. So a lot of times we feel that we're not allowed to have big, scary emotions. Like you can't be like a woman can't be angry. You can't be mad. You can't be upset. You know, you feel like you, like, I know, I know for me personally, for a long time, I was always happy, joyful, happy, happy, like upbeat. I didn't really allow myself to feel all of the sections of, of emotion. You know, I felt like I somehow wasn't allowed to be upset. I wasn't allowed to be angry. I wasn't allowed to say no. I wasn't allowed to communicate my emotions. But I think when you're able to identify what your emotions are, allow yourself to have them, come by them, but you identify what they are, you allow yourself to have them. And then you also put them in context. So you're like, oh, like, of course I'm mad when my boyfriend doesn't text me back right away. Because in my mind, I equate his silence to he's mad at me. He's going to leave me. I'm being rejected. I'm being abandoned. So of course I'm really pissed off. He didn't, you know, text me right away. But just because I feel this way, that doesn't mean it's the reality or the truth. He's probably in traffic. He's probably talking to his mom, he's probably doing whatever. So it's okay to have those feelings, but you also want to contextualize and understand those feelings and realize that your feelings aren't facts. Just because I feel this way and I'm allowed to feel however I want to feel, that doesn't mean that my feelings are facts. I need to contextualize them and then I need to communicate in a healthy way to back that up. 
And also just because you feel angry, that doesn't mean you are allowed to act angry. And those are two different things. You could say, I'm really upset you didn't call me back right away. What was going on versus going off and going crazy and going nuts. And also versus denying or avoiding, because I also feel a lot of times as women will like kind of get a little passive aggressive. So instead Mm -hmm. of saying, you know, it really bothered me that you didn't text me back in a timely manner or a respectful manner will be like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You know, it's like, now I'm going to do okay. it to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we start creating stories in our head. Well, he's going to have to text me back twice next time. And I'm not going to call him back. And I bet he was doing this. And I bet he was doing that. And we've created this whole story. We have this whole vengeance mm-hmm. plan. Oh, oh, I, well, I didn't do your laundry today. Well, too bad. Maybe if you would have texted me back, I would have had time. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like all that stuff where it could have all been avoided if you just said, hey, babe, you know, I, I, I love you and I want this to work out or not, you don't have to go that deep, but you say, hey, babe, you know, I just want to start with, you know, I really love you. And I just want, you to know, what comes up for me when you don't get back to me is I feel anxiety that something's wrong I feel anxious as this is happening I, I start to spiral I start to create the story so you know next time could you just shoot me a note back and say hey babe super busy I'll get back to you when I can you know or just you know or it could even be an emoji if you're really busy we could just have a code like you just threw me back a heart or a smiley face just to kind of like soothe me for that you know so I think that also goes back to being vulnerable with people and being authentic and transparent because it is so it gets easier but when Mm -hmm. you're not used to it it is so much easier to swallow deny avoid and then create stories in our head of what's going on because that's what our mind wants to do our mind whenever we feel threatened you know whenever we feel anxious or fearful because the true fear is he's going to leave me that's what the deep rooted fear is I'm going to be abandoned. He's going to leave. Whether it's rational or real, doesn't matter. That's what the, that's where that all is coming from. And so it's easier to deny and to avoid all of those feelings than just to show up fully and be your true vulnerable person to say, hey, babe, when you do this, it makes me feel like this. Ha, huh, that's scary. It's scary yeah, to see that. It's yeah. scary to see that. But the more you do it, and you also have to be discerning, you have to do it with a person who is worthy of your truth and who is worthy of your vulnerability, because there are some partners out there who they're emotionally not capable of dealing with that because they're going to hear no matter what you're trying to argue, you're trying to fight, they're going to dismiss, they're going to put you down. So you also have to make sure that your partner is in a place to receive your vulnerability in a safe way. So hopefully the person you're seeing is, and if they're not, you could say is willing to get there with you. You know, if you're not there yet, they're not there yet. Have that conversation and say, Hey, this is super scary for me too. I know it might be super scary for you, but let's together decide this is the journey we're going to go on as a couple, as a team. You know, that's really, it can be really scary to say that. I just had a with my own guy so I, I definitely understand <laughs> you were just <laughs> putting that into practice I mean, no I no I like you t- we talked about journaling and I'm just going to be super transparent with you guys yeah. I before I have those big conversations with him I write it down I have like a script I'm like okay at the top of it I go cool, calm, collected. <laughs> so healthy communication. And then I'm like, why blah, blah, blah. So like I have this little script that I have because like, A, I don't want to revert to past patterns of people pleasing where I'm just like, oh no, it's okay. Don't worry. It's fine. And I just shut down my own emotions. I numb out to my own wants and needs. I don't prioritize the things that I need in order to feel validated and loved and secure and safe, you know, and fear of being, oh, he's going to think I'm needy. He's going to think I'm desperate. He's going to think this, this, this. And that's all not true. We're human beings. Like Mm -hmm. it's natural and healthy to want, you know, not just even community, but connection with somebody else. And 
in love with somebody else. And I, and I like, it's scary at first, but when you get to the other side, there's no more beautiful level of true intimacy with someone when you can show up fully as yourself and they can say, I see you and I hear you. And I'm here for you. Like Mm -hmm. that's, that's what true intimacy is when you can say, Hey, love, when this happens, this is how it makes me feel. I know it might not be right, but this is how it is. Can we find a way through it? And have someone look at you and say, I hear you and you are enough and there's nothing wrong with you. Let's figure out a way to get through this together. That is true. That is a totally different level of intimacy. So it, so it's worth getting there. So I would say those are kind of some of the things to work on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I love like when you put all, everything you've talked about, all those practices, when you really show yourself that self-love, um, you're then showing other people like this more free way to live and you're empowering them to love themselves and start to step into their boundaries and show up more vulnerably and fully and all of that. So it's like this beautiful ripple effect that it starts with, you know, us, this individual um, energetic piece, because we're all like one, right? But it starts here. And then when we show up fully as ourselves, um, we, we spread that further and further through the world. So um, thank you for sharing everything you talked about today. I feel like I would love to just talk to you forever and ever. <laughs> You're amazing. I'm here. I'm here. Um, yeah. Woo. yeah. Woo. Um, but will you tell everybody what freebies, the amazing freebies you're offering them are? Yes. So my, the biggest freebie I'm offering is a 30 minute self-care session with me. Just shoot me an email. Let me know that you attended the year of you retreats. And I will give you a free complimentary 30 minute self-care session. And that is just, I will send you um, some preliminary questions for you to fill out and send back. And then during our 30 minutes together, you'll tell me your story, what's going on with you. And I will give you some actionable guidance on things that you can then actually implement into your life. So we won't just be chatting, but when you walk away, you'll have a tangible personalized plan for you to start loving yourself a little bit more in the real world. And then other freebies and goodies. Um, I have a 30 day uh, self-care mind shift guide. And then I also have um, a, a 10 self-care ideas for the heart freebies. And there's a, I'll give a link to that. You guys can just go to the website and grab those for free. And then I also have uh, the Sugar Pills podcast, A Practical Guide to Self-Care. So that's a free podcast weekly. Kelly actually is going to be on this Yay. Sunday. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to play, so let's put the date out there. She will be the December, what's the Sunday? Uh, 20th? Yeah, December yes. 20th. <laughs> yeah. So Kelly is my December 20th guest on the podcast. And you can find that on, yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> it was fantastic. You can find that on um, iTunes, like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. And I actually just got um, on iHeartRadio. So I'm super excited for that. So Kelly's episode will be on iHeartRadio. So yeah. So those are- Congratulations. Thank you. I was nervous. (laughs) That's amazing. yeah, Yeah, it's actually, your episode will be the first one on there. So I'm super excited for that. Oh my God. I'm so honored. Uh, I'm so, thank you so much. All of that. I'll link all your stuff on the landing page so people can find it under the video. And yeah, you guys check her out, check out her podcast. It's incredible. And thank you again, Candy, for all the work you do in the world. It's just so needed and you're amazing. You do. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you.